Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Oh man, what is that smell? No, I didn't fart. We got skunks in the house. Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Ganesh. Ganesh writes, Hi, Harry, your shows are awesome. One of my best part of the day is to find out what you have to share. Thanks for being funny and informative at the same time. Oh, well, thank you so much, Ganesh. I appreciate you. And I appreciate you watching. Appreciate you thinking I'm funny and informative at the same time. I try, you know. This coffee actually helps a lot. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you so, so much. If you want to hook up the channel, super thanks is the way. Link is below. You can hook us up and support the channel as much or as little as you'd like. All right. Thank you guys so, so much for taking care of us throughout the years. And my coffee. So it's about two, three weeks since I've had the mug. It's starting to smell a little funny now. <laughs> I should probably wash it, shouldn't I? <laughs> yeah. Kind of has a weird, it tastes like coffee, but it smells, you know, you know what I mean. The top smells, whatever. Um, Speaking of smell, do you remember these? What was the nickname, guys? Do you remember? What does it look like? It looks like a skunk, doesn't it? Therefore, the nickname. What did you play with before? Oh, the skunk. Do you know what kind of racket it was? The skunk. Was it a Wilson? The skunk. <laughs> it was a hammer skunk 6.2 from Wilson and the mid plus 95 right here was the better seller of the two there was a 110 I noticed a lot of teaching pros used the oversized um, 110 now the MP was the top selling racket for years like 20 Probably 20 years ago, we sold a lot of these. It was like flying out the door. Um, why was it so popular though? Well, the kids used it. A lot of beginners used it. Intermediates used it. Advanced, not so much. But um, it was just an easy racket to play with. But let's take a deeper dive into this. Like why was it so popular back then? I mean, it had hammer system, uh, which is like super head heavy. If you guys didn't know, hammer system basically made it easier for anybody to play with. Like anybody could pl pick up a racket that had the hammer system in it and immediately be good. Immediately take um, the racket and swing. And so let me tell you why. <laughs> When a racket is heavy in the head, it's kind of like holding um, a ball and chain or a hammer, as they call it. So when you do this, the racket immediately drops. So it helps with the drop because it's so heavy. So all you really have to do is bring it through. You just have to throw the racket at the ball. The top of the racket is weighted, therefore ball t you know, racket takes over, takes over the ball too, and then helps you finish up. So, because it's all weighted at the top, right? They don't do that anymore. Um, but why don't they do that anymore? Ball's coming a little faster. But I feel like this technology um, may and could still be relevant today. Maybe not in this much of an extremity, but um, let's take a look at the numbers though. I've, you know, I've in my 20, 
some years of knowing the racket, I've actually never weighed and balanced this thing. So I'd like to know if, you know, how extreme it was. Whoa, <laughs> that didn't work. It's so head heavy that it doesn't balance very well. 278 overall weight. So that's with strings in there. That's pretty light. Wow. I thought it would be at least 300 with the strings in there. That's ridiculous. Okay. Hmm. Let's check out the oversize. Let's see if it goes like this instead. There we go. 285. And that's strong. Okay, so we'll go with the MP first. Look at this. It went way out there. Let me move it so you guys can see it. Ooh. 30. <laughs> wow. 382. Not too many rackets go all the way out there. Okay. <laughs> right about there. 370. Four. Let's see if our swing weight is higher than Andy Murray's. All right, let's see what number we get on the swing weight. Three thirty four. Hmm. I was expecting a bigger number. Let's try it again. No, that's what it is. Okay. One ten. Three thirty nine. Okay. Let's analyze. All right, so let's analyze the skunks. Really light. Okay, really light. That's strong weight. Usually you get the rackets that are this weight unstrung these days. In this day and age, those would be categorized as lights. Like if you were to, you know, go to a Babolat line, it would be like a pure drive light um, or a clash light, or, or it's actually even lighter than those rackets. It's, um, it's ridiculous how light those rackets are. These numbers actually tell you the, the story already. Um, so we're looking at less than 10, we're like 265s or so on these. Um, yeah, if you think about 265, that's a kid's weighted racket. But where it changes is this number, this number. All that weight in the head helps that racket along, makes it more powerful, makes it more stable. The only reason why these aren't bigger is because this racket, is, this, this weight isn't bigger. If these were a little bit bigger and there was more total weight on it, they would jack these numbers up a little bit more. But because it ain't heavy to start, there's only the top weight to measure. But this, this is what tells the story. That's why it's a hammer. <laughs> so 
with the hammer system, you could get away with being so light. But could you get away with the hammer system today? Let's go out with Coach Rob and test the hammer system in these skunks and see if it's still relevant today. And let's see if we could still play with it. All right, see you on the court. All right, so we just got off the court with the, do you remember the name of these? The skunk. The skunks. Yes. Did they smell like Pepe Le Pew? Only when you hit a bad shot. <laughs> I must have smelled it up a lot then. Good thing <laughs> I didn't play with these. Um, Coach, did you sell a lot of these when you Absolutely. Were... Oh. Yep. Tell me Especially about. Especially the midsize. A lot of uh, a better juniors kind of liked it back in the day. They were transitioning. Um, you know, into the, the, the newest technology back then. Mm -hmm. And yeah, a lot of the good juniors, we had some adults that enjoyed it. Um, I think it was maybe like a 4.0 adult that kind of mm -hmm. uh, played with it. Um, women, a lot of women. We had a few women. Mm. Um, I'm trying to test my <laughs> memory now, Eric. Um, but yeah, no, I, I really, I loved hitting with it. I loved the ping again. I'm like, oh yeah, the ping. Mm -hmm. And that's why everybody, I think Dantmers came out and because right. nobody liked it as Need much it. as but yeah, it was fun. And we got, uh, you know, the old school grip, the sponge cushion air. That's mm -hmm. kind of cool. I put that on just for you. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was great. It felt good. I like the skunk. So there's a 95 version that you're holding yes. and a 110 version that I'm holding. I don't really remember that you one remember too much. I don't think we sold that one that much. Oh, okay. I don't think it was as popular. This was kind of the seniors slash, I mean, older person's kind of a right. racket. Um, you're right. I it just didn't have as much power for an older person looking for a bigger, more powerful racket. Mm -hmm. um, no, you're right. I, I probably sold 90% that one, like high 80s and 90%. Right. And that one was like flying out the door, top selling racket. I want to say three years rolling probably. It was Could like be. It, it, uno. Yeah, I was surprised when they stopped it. We're like, what do you, what's taking its place? What are you making that's, you know. Um, they did a hyper hammer version. Remember that? Yeah. And then that's when it slowly kind of, you know, not right. nose dive, but kind of ease down. And then that's when other things kind of slowly came into the market. Right. So you tried the 95, which brought back a ton of memories to Loved you. Loved it. Felt How good. was the 110? It, you know, it wasn't bad. Um, I didn't like it as much as I like this one, mm -hmm. but they felt really similar. There wasn't a huge difference. Huh. Um, you know, I know the racket has a little bigger, but still felt good. Yeah. Not now, as I, good as this. But. I thought this was way too much power. I couldn't keep the ball in. And then it was interesting playing with the hammer system again, because it, when you, when I reared it back like this, the racket just, you know, wanted to, and then... I had to drag it across again, which actually took a little more time. And if I didn't quite catch it in time, it would, the, the weight of the racket just kind of pushed it through, therefore hitting it out. <laughs> and I had a bigger problem with the 110 uh, more than the 95. The 95 I was able to keep in a little bit more, but 
it was a little little hard or little harder to get used to like the hammer kind of a system coming through the the thing again right i mean you don't have that problem no obviously <laughs> but do you think rackets like that would be relevant today would it work still you know it depends on the player it depends on their stroke depends on their you know what they're looking for out of a racket but i think if you gave this racket to um you know somebody let them try it for a little while they'd probably adjust and adapt depending on their level mm -hmm. um you know, especially on age specific, but you know, the rackets nowadays have, you know, changed so much relative to these, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, if it has a sweet spot, you should be able to find it if you're good. Right. <laughs> well, I feel like they took the weight here. I mean, and, and brought it into like kind of in this zone. It's not so like that. You see? Um, so there, there's a little too much weight in there too much swing speed too much swing weight in these but right. i mean there's a reason why you know rackets have evolved totally and, yep. and i think because the speed of the ball going faster these are a lot harder to drag through when these were out i feel like the ball speed was not quite what it is today therefore you can catch up to the ball and add more ball speed to it because of this technology well, and the spin right you know uh, people are hitting with way more spin there was no poly string mm -hmm. back if i remember right back when these were mm -mm. you know maybe it was like a pro blend or something was right but I, you know felt good to me that's <laughs> i enjoyed it <laughs> what if i told you that wasn't a wilson would you still like it um, not as much, <laughs> not as much. It's a Wilson, all right. Ah, uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> you've, right, tri you've tricked me before. I'm gonna paint one, one in the, one day and all make black. it look like this. Just make it all black yeah, and go, yeah. what, what, yeah. who is makes that a Wilson? This? What racket is it? <laughs> thank you, Coach Rob. <laughs> sure. Appreciate you. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Out. The ball was in. You cannot be serious. You cannot be serious. The ball hit the paint. Paint flew up. Did you not see that? Are you blind? You need an eye doctor. You cannot be serious. Oh, wait. I have swing vision. The ball is in.